Hello, you are most welcome to the Vero Knowledge channel. My name is Veronica Rose, and uh, if you haven't yet subscribed, I'll keep reminding you, subscribe to this channel. If you've already subscribed, thank you so much. Go ahead and now like, share. So yesterday I got a phone call from one of my colleagues and uh, he was a little bit sad, mentioning that uh, his CISA certification had been revoked. Uh, so from inquiring further, he told me that he was unable during that time to, to report CPE hours to ensure that he could maintain the certification. And uh, from that, I thought of uh, recording a video on um, how to report your, how to maintain your CISA certification and also how to how to report your CPE hours. Of course, I'll do another video on how to report your CPE hours for your other certifications. But uh, basically this one, um, it's for when you finish passing your CISA examination, what happens next, okay? Um, of course, you prepare. Preparing for a CISA certification takes a lot of time, takes a lot of energy, effort, you know, sacrifices of other things for you to, to ensure that you pass this exam. So you wouldn't wish to use all that and then lose the certification at the end of the day. That's why I'm coming up with this video. So uh, let's get started. So one thing is that when you finish passing your CISA examination, you will apply to get certified, okay? Uh, reason being that uh, you passing an CISA certification doesn't mean that you are already now CISA certified. You have to apply for certification first so that they see that you meet the criteria for being a CISA. Um, I'll also record another video related to um, what you need to qualify to be a CISA. So you've passed your CISA exam you've uh, applied for uh, for CISA certification. So what happens next is that uh, you will get certified after they have validated your years of experience and, and you've met the criteria needed for you to have the CISA designation. So the next thing is that you will need to be reporting your CPE hours. So CPE stands for Continuous uh, Professional Education, where you'll be required to adhere to the professional code of ethics. So CISA holders need to agree to the professional code of ethics, uh, first of all, to guide them and their professional and uh, professional, uh, sorry, personal and professional conduct. So adhering to the CPE program, the continuous professional education means that you'll be, you'll be doing activities or be involved in activities that will enable you maintain your certification. Okay, I hope we are still together up there. So for you to maintain your CISA certification, uh, you, you need to be reporting a minimum of 20 CPE hours annually. And uh, on top of that, you'll be paying a maintenance fee for your certification. I hope we are still together up to there. So... There are ways on how you will be earning CPE hours. There are quite a number of ways. Uh, and if you can go to the ISACA website, you'll, you'll be able to see uh, ways on how to earn your CPE hours. Uh, one way on how to earn CPE hours is um, continuous education. You can attend ISACA events. You can uh, attend an ISACA training that qualifies for that attend webinars out there, uh, contribute as a volunteer to earn CPEs. You can also check on the ISACA web website on how to be an ISACA volunteer. So on all those activities, you'll be able to report CPE hours. You can speak at an event. Uh, so dependent on the event organizers, they determine which CPE hours you, you get. You attend a chapter event. You can earn maybe one CPE hour or 35 CPE hours, and then remember to report them. So the CPE uh, management um, uh, process is a little bit bigger. I think I'll have to make several videos on uh, how to manage your CPE hours, how to report them, and also ways on how to um, report your CPE hours. But 
This applies to also other certifications. If you have any other ISACA certification, remember for you to maintain that certification, you'll have to be engaged in these activities, you know, continuous learning, continuous training, writing an article, volunteering, um, uh, engaging with other professionals, uh, serving on a chapter committee, cha serving on a chapter board, all that, those are all ways of how you can earn your CPE hours. And when you earn them, remember to report them on there, on your ISACA portal. So if we can go real quick on how you can report, um, how you can report your CPE hours, let me try here real quick on uh, how I can log into. I'm not going to share my screen, but I'd like to guide you uh, so that you can follow through as I speak. You follow through on how you can um, you can report your CPE hours to avoid your CISA certification from uh, getting revoked. So I've logged into my ISACA um, account. Uh, so if you're an ISACA member or a certification holder, you have an account already. So you can go to my ISACA account and then check, um, go to, yeah, when the dashboard displays, you'll see uh, certifications and CPE management. So for the certification CPE management, you'll see that uh, earning and reporting minimum of 20 CPE hours annually is a requirement for each of the certification that you hold. And then uh, you will need 120 CPE hours in a span of three years for you to qualify. Then the annual maintenance fee for each of your certification is $45 for members. And then for non-members, it is um, $85. So what you'll yeah what you'll do you go to um, certification and CPE management and then you select uh, recording as CPE ISACA CPE records and then you click uh, you will see there are activities that uh, you might have already attended maybe if they are ISACA related they are already on your dashboard so those ones you just need to apply them. But if they are not already there, uh, the record is not already there created for you, you will need to report them. And also remember, ISACA does an annual audit of uh, CPE reporting. So you here you need to apply integrity when you're reporting CPE hours that are not ISACA related. So that um, when they are doing the audit, they are able to see that this, uh, that they are able to have the evidence in uh, response to what you reported. So when you attend ISACA conferences, you'll earn a total of 32 CP hours. If you attend uh, maybe a training, you may earn 32 CP hours. If you attend an online training, you will earn 36 free CP hours. If you attend any one in tech event, educational event, you'll earn one CP hours. If you uh, attend uh, the on-demand trainings, you'll earn 28 CP hours. If you participate in the ISACA journals, you'll earn one CP hours, the journal quizzes. And uh, if you volunteer with ISACA, you'll earn up to 20 CP hours per year. If you volunteer in one in tech, you'll earn one CP hours or up to 20, depends on the on the volunteer engagement you're engaged in. Um, there are several ways of earning CPE hours, but uh, here is to remind you, uh, please record these CPE hours so that at the end of the year, you have a total of 20, and in the span of three years, you have a total of 120 CPE hours to avoid your certification from being revoked because you wouldn't wish to redo this exam again or to rewrite, you know, to prepare again and do the exam. And remember the exam content material keeps changing. So if you did your exam four years ago, the content has already changed. So please ensure you report your CPE hours. And uh, I wish you all the best, just be career smart. So if you haven't yet subscribed to this channel, this is the right time, please go ahead and subscribe. Also share with other people, share with other CISA certification holders so that we can all thrive in this um thrive in our careers so thank you all for watching and i wish you a good day thanks